Hello, and welcome to everyone listening to this episode of the Written and Melanin podcast. Wherever this day may have found you, I am glad that you are here. My name is Chelsea, and I'm here with Miss LaCase Cousineau, and we are here to discuss I Want to Be Where You Are by Christina Forrest. It was the Written and Melanin book club of the month for the month of March, and yeah, we're here for it. So... Ready to get started? Let's just like get into this. Let's just jump in. It was a good book. Yeah. (laughs) Into the podcast. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Into the podcast, like head first. So um, a little bit about this book before we get into the nitty gritty details of it. But for those of you who have not read it, it is a YA, which is short for young adult novel. Um, it is about a young black ballerina and she has dreams of attending this prestigious dance school for her senior year to kick off her ballet career. But her mom says, ain't happening. So what does she do? She, her mom goes on a cruise with her boyfriend and while she's gone, while mom's away, the ballerina will dance. So she hops in her car and she goes on a road trip to go to this audition so that she can not miss her chance. She is trying to shoot her shot. But as she's leaving, cute neighbor from across the way is just like, hey, where are you going? And this is a YA novel, so you can assume what happens next. That being said, you understand now the book that we are about to talk about. If it's your thing, stay listening. If it's not, stay listening anyway. We could change your mind. All right, that being said, Overall impressions of this book, what were they for you? Oh yeah, I thought it was a really lovely read. Um, I sometimes enjoy just being able to sit with a book. I don't have to worry about any sort of darkness or you know, like like super heavy subject matter. It was just a, a very, and that's not. I don't, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean sometimes it's just nice to read a light, airy, hopeful book. You know, not everything has to be super heavy and dark. Um, I really wish that I had read this book when I was younger. I think it would have been so good for young LaCase, um, who was also trying to come into her own and figure out what, like, where I wanted to be. Um, I think it's great for young adults, for sure, because it's a young woman figuring out her own path. Um, and, And she's figuring it out in a way where it's not, like, tied to a guy or anything like that or a romance. You know, she's not... Yeah chasing somebody she's chasing after her own ideal self which is so nice um so yeah i thought christina forrest did a great job with capturing you know the impulsivity and wonderment and hopefulness of youth um so yeah i i I thought it was a sweet book i i read it pretty quickly i mean just sat with it it wasn't you know something that i had to force myself to read i once i was in i was in i concur like i (laughs) I am in the same boat because I was like, I read it in one sitting, which is something that I normally don't do, especially Mm -hmm. recently. And it was nice, like you said, to just be able to sit down and read it. And it it, it is, it's like, it's light, it's fluffy. It's, I don't want to say it's cotton candy, but like if we were to compare books to food for me, it's like you have these heavier books with heavier topics that you really have to like dig into and pull back layers upon layers and then you have this book, which is like the dessert. It's like the, the cotton candy you get at the fair. It's like, you know what you're getting. You know what you're there for. Mm-hmm. And it fits the the setting and it fits what it's supposed to do. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I really liked how you pointed out that it, it, the in YA, a lot of times you have the protagonist chasing after their love interests. And in this one, it's just like, they're, they're friends and mm-hmm. their whole, for like 90% of the book, they're literally just friends. Yeah. And he, you, you kind of get the idea that the feelings are there and that they have this history together. But at the same time, it's kind of like, she is just kind of at this point where she's just like, I am focused on me in this dance audition and I don't want to be anywhere near you. I don't want you distracting me. I don't want you getting in my way. None of that. And so it's refreshing to read the, not like all the, oh, he's looking at me. My heart is fluttering. Oh, should I text him? Who's that in his phone? Like, it's it's nice to not have that. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And I mean, I like we say that the book is like light and fluffy, but 
there there are I'm sure we'll get into it later, but there are elements that touch. I mean, there are elements of heavier subject matter, but it's still like just retains that sort of like effervescence as you're reading it, um, which I really enjoyed. But yeah, to come back to what you're saying, it, it, it was really great that you watch these two kids like discover their friendship and then discover why they like each other. It's not just like, boom, we saw each other across the hall. We love each other now, right? Like dedicated for, to each other. And we're going to save the kingdom. You know? <laughs> I, <it's so> <laughs> but it was just really nice to feel, watch, to watch, oh my gosh, to read something that felt a little bit more organic um, in that regard. Yeah, for sure. And that's what's the... That is what's so great about this book because it, it really feels natural. Yeah. Like maybe not the sneaking off to go drive across the state for a dance audition. Maybe not that part. <laughs> but like the interaction <laughs> of the characters felt very real and very natural and very like grounded. And yeah. you didn't have like these crazy, crazy scenarios where you're just like, oh my God, that would never happen in real life. Or, oh, what perfect timing. This would never happen except in a book. Like, mm-hmm. no, this is very... You, you, it's easy to imagine, like you said, like watching it, like you can see this happening mm-hmm. because it's not so far fetched that your that your imagination is working overtime. It's just enough to pull you into the world of the book without feeling like, okay, like how much are you going to make me pretend like this is actually going to happen? You know? <laughs> right. You don't have to suspend <laughs> that much disbelief. I will say, I loved. Um, I really enjoyed her best friend, Reina, little, our little actress. Uh, she reminded me of some of my friends in high school, just like super dramatic. I'm like, oh God, theater kids. But like, it was, I love their dyna- their little dynamic. It was really sweet to see that. Um, Absolutely. And yeah. one of the things that I loved about Reina is how um, in the book, of course, you know, you have the main character, her love interest, and uh, main character is Chloe. Love interest is Eli, their best friend who moved away. I want to say his name is Trey. Trey. Mm-hmm. And... Um, that she has her current best friend, which is Raina. I am a big proponent and everything happens for a reason. And the way she meets her current best friend, Raina, is that she moves into her old best friend's house when he moves away. Mm -hmm. And so she has this moment in the book where she's like, you know, if he would have never moved away, I would have never met Raina because she wouldn't have moved into his house. Yeah. And that kind of brings into the whole thing of everything happens for a reason, which is kind of crazy because in the book, she doesn't really like to think like that but Eli is a very big proponent of you know there's a reason this happened everything is tied together nothing is coincidence Mm -hmm. or whatever and she fights this idea the whole book so I thought it was really nice when she had that that introspective moment when she was like oh I guess it kind of does one thing does lead to another and I thought that was really nice especially like my personal mindset is just like that I Mm -hmm. like thinking that, okay, because this happened, it led to this other thing happening, whether good or or bad. I like to think that the good things wouldn't happen without the bad and the bad things wouldn't happen without the good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that being said, um, for those of you listening to the podcast, this is the discussion of the book for the book club. So this is fair warning that if you have not read it, this discussion here on will probably contain heavy spoilers. Mm -hmm. So proceed with caution. Okay. You have been warned. All right. That being said, let's like get into this, into this. What did you think of her whole plan? Like, just like from top to bottom, (laughs) because I have my opinion. (laughs) (laughs) It was definitely a teenager's plan. (laughs) <laughs> um oh my gosh great happenstance with her mom and uh was it john mark her mom's boyfriend yeah getting that cruise like all again that happens for a reason stuff honestly i didn't i mean it was not a good plan for a teenager to lie to her parents and drive hours away for an audition um but I was actually kind of, I was like rooting for her. I was like, yes, follow your dream. Yes, do it. Like, you know, you only get this chance once in life, probably. Well, you know, you never know. You just never know. Um, Yeah. But I actually kind of like, I was like, yeah, this is a plan I could see to 17 girls coming up. So Chloe has her best friend, Raina, um, pose as Raina's mother. And the plan is they're going to lie and say Chloe's staying with her best friend, Raina. 
while um, her mother is on a cruise. So Raina impersonates her mom. Chloe's mom says yes. And then from there, Chloe's going to drive to this audition for the ballet company and um, hopefully be back before her mom, even though she's gone. Never works out that way. Spoiler alert to any teenagers yeah. listening. It never works. <laughs> it doesn't. It does not work. It does it not. Your work. mom will know. Oh my gosh. Will. They always find out. And sometimes if you're like me, you tell on yourself. Um, or if you're yeah. like my parents, they took the mileage on the car and they're like, where you been? Oh, and ooh, so nice. <laughs> you know about that. You know Chloe was not sending back the mileage dial. <laughs> no Real story. When I was 17, I was I thought I was so slick. And I went to like I went to my aunt's house and I had a great time and I came back and my parents were just like they were cool and stuff in front of my aunt. I'm like, I'm I'm good, like I'm not even thinking about it. And then we park in the driveway and they're so they like they turn to me and they're like, So where you been? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and long story short, they found out oh. and the privileges were revoked. Oh <laughs> okay? gosh, yes. So that's how it always goes. That being uh, said. I love it. <laughs> That being said, because that was my personal experience, that was like the biggest flaw to me in her plan. I'm like, so what happens if your mom like checks your car, homie? Or like, I don't know, like gas, like you gotta pay for that. What happens if she checked your bank statement? Oh, Like you got gas where? You bought McDonald's where? Cause that's how my parents found out. Yeah. I left a receipt <gasps> crumpled up no. underneath the, underneath the seat and they pulled it up and they were like what were you doing here and i didn't even realize it was there and they were like yeah we were trying to do your favor and clean up your car for you (sighs) while you were gone and we found it and so now we want to know where you've been and then they checked the mileage and everything just de-escalated but hey mom if you're listening to it i'm sorry i didn't mean to lie to you i mean i did but i apologize for lying to you she's a great girl now so she (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm fantastic she's she's doing great uh yeah that was a huge flaw huge huge i didn't even, i didn't even think about that when i was reading i was like oh this isn't gonna work out just because like, knowing teenagers i'm like something's gonna go wrong something has but, to yeah but in the realm of teenagers because like again keep in mind that like well case and i are both grown okay fully this grown book... sorry, sorry. <laughs> like fully grown fully married grown. like we're we're good we're doing the adulting thing I'm talking crispy burnt <laughs> Oh, <laughs> done in the oven. Sorry. <laughs> uh, don't mind me. I had a little but, bit of coffee. <laughs> but this book is for young adults and the young adult yeah. genre is geared toward, you know, that 13 to like 18 ish range. And honestly, I would say this book, it would be more geared to that 13, 14, 15 age oh, range. Yeah. And when you're 15, her plan is, is foolproof. <laughs> Wait till mom goes on the cruise, Boom. get in the car, drive because she's she's up north i want to say they're in jersey they're in jersey and, yeah and she had to go to was it, was it dc dc yes she, she had to go to dc and as to go to the dance audition because her mom wouldn't let her go to the one in new york because the whole reason this plan comes about is because she wants to um go to this dance school that this famous uh, male ballerina is it, are, are men called ballerinas i don't know uh, yeah but this okay so this male ballerina is opening his name is avery johnson and she wants to go. It's it's a conservatory, but you can only attend while you're in high school. She's yeah. a junior. She's like, I have to get in this year. Otherwise, I can't go. Yeah. And this will launch my dance career. I can definitely get in. Just let me try out. And her mom's like, no, like you're going to go to college. Like dancing is not a, a career move. Like it's fun. It kept you out of the streets. But like you need to start thinking about like your future. And obviously she rails against this. So when her mom goes on this cruise, she's like, to DC, I'm going to make the audition there instead. But, you know, that doesn't work out. So she ends up having to go to the audition in North Carolina and like go from there. So I just thought the whole plan was like, I thought it was cute and I thought it was very realistic to what you're thinking when you're 17. Yeah. And what I kind of loved about it was that the whole idea is like, like when you're 17, you that's when you 17, 18, 16-ish sometimes, maybe a little later, that's when you start realizing like your autonomy from your parents. Yes. Like, you have to make decisions for your life yourself. Like they want things for you, but at the end you have to make the ultimate decision yeah. and you have to live out the consequences. And that's when you start really thinking like, 
I know you want this for me, but do I want this for myself? Yes. And if not, is it worth me going against you and fighting you on this so that I can get what I want? Yeah. And I like how she gets to that point um, where she's like, she's still, cause like, let's be real here. Whether her plan succeeded or failed and spoiler, it fails. Her mom definitely finds out before <laughs> <laughs> she gets back home. Yeah. But even if she had succeeded, right? And she had gone to the audition and then she had come back. Like, you still have to deal with the results of the competition. Yeah. Like, she was still going to have to address the issue head on with her mom. And the yes. whole idea of the book at the beginning was, I'm just going to go around you so that I don't have to confront this issue with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I like how this book showed that as you grow, there are definitely going to be issues in your life that you can't circumvent. You have to face them head on. Yeah. And... A large one of that is going to be your future. Yes. Um, I'm monologuing. I'm not going to do that. No, I, you're fine. I, you're, I, you're, you're sharing yeah. facts. I'm just like, yes, girl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I liked it. I like that. Uh, I like the show of youth and her coming of age. And I guess that's what I would label this as. It's a, it's a true coming of age story in the sense of... It wasn't necessarily, I would say, major life event. Like sometimes you have YA books where it's just like someone dies or they suddenly have to move away or they have like these circumstances out of their control. I like that her coming of age was completely 100% within her control. Yes. You know, she made this decision for herself. Yeah. It was nice to see that. It wasn't like life thrust her in this position where she had to figure it out, which I, I enjoy those stories as well. But this was a nice change of pace for what I normally read. Just the young girl like, okay, this is what I want. I'm going to go do it. She's uh, Chloe. The main character is a shy, relatively shy. Like she follows the rules. She doesn't lie. Eli constantly talks about like, you never lie. You don't, you don't break the rules. You do everything right. You know, that that's who she is. But um, she followed her dream. Yeah. She is like the literal definition of a good child. Like yeah. her mom trusts her so much mm -hmm. that she doesn't even blink twice when she's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to stay with my best friend. She's just like, okay, like that you wouldn't lie to me. Like she doesn't lie to her mom. That's not yep. who she is. And so that also creates issues with her and her mom because she's like, you've never done this before. Like, why would you do this? I said, no, the issue was done. So it also created issues, you know, on the flip side of that coin with her mom, because she's like, she's not only have Chloe's not having to confront her mom, but her mom's having to confront Chloe. Mm. And she's never had to do that before. Cause like after everything fails, her mom doesn't even know how to properly ground her because <laughs> she's never had to do it before. And I thought that was like hilarious. Yeah, that was nice touch. Like, I guess she doesn't know that like you're supposed to take cell phones when you ground your daughter, but I'm not going to tell her that. So, but then it's also funny when Raina's mom comes and Raina's parents, they have it on lock, like no phone, no, mm -mm, no, <laughs> no smoke car, signals, nothing, no cars. You're walking over here. You're going to, you're going to face her and apologize yep. and we're leaving. Like, Oh, you still in the bathroom? Lies. Get out here right now. Yeah. Like we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no fun at all. Uh, yeah. 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 But, um, so, okay, next, I guess, kind of question, because we've talked about Raina, we've talked about, uh, Chloe and her mom. How did you feel about Eli? Like, from beginning to end, and, like, did your idea of him change? Oh, yeah. Um, my idea of him kind of stayed the same just because I kind of felt where he was going I understood what kind of character you know we all there's you can't write a character without sprinkling in some tropes it, like it's, I feel like it's impossible yeah. you know I don't think tropes are a bad thing and they're identifiable and they work for a reason like I had a feeling he's the bad boy he's misunderstood like oh he draws okay yeah he's sensitive okay so this is where this is gonna go <laughs> I, I ate it up he was you know I was I was anticipating his turn. And I was thankful that it happened because, um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I I I was happy that the turn came because I found his character a little annoying at first. Mm -hmm. um, that's just me. I I'm not into that, uh, you know, uh, type of character. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my kind of guy. Um, but I was glad he he switched like that. His character progressed and changed. Um, but he was kind of like an archetype of the misunderstood bad boy, yeah. you know? Yeah. So like, if you're, if you go for the misunderstood bad boy with a sensitive soul, who's 
really, really a nice guy underneath the exterior. And even though he's popular, he prefers to be by himself and he's cutting off all of his, you know, bad influencing friends. Like if you if you love that, that character, that guy, yeah. you're absolutely gonna love Eli. Yeah. And um, you know, Chloe does too. She is absolutely enamored with him. And I I liked Eli, like, from the beginning, because I felt like he was probably the most stable character. Like, mm. I felt like Chloe would not have been able to do this road trip without Eli for the simple fact that he was the only one who was just like, you said you're going to go, so, like, go. I don't understand what the <laughs> issue is. Like, you've lied to your mom. You've, you've gassed up the car. You're, we're literally on the highway. And I the thing, the thing is, like, it, it's like, for me, it was like a double-edged sword because... One thing you have to know about Chloe is that she hates driving on the highway. I feel her pain. I yeah. hate driving on the highway too because people don't know how to drive. It's mm-hmm. dangerous. They don't look where they're going. They weave in and out of lanes. They're they're driving super fast. They don't know where they're going. They're looking at their phones. Whatever. She hates it. She this girl's going like 45 on the highway. That first of all, that's dangerous. It's if you don't know dangerous. how to drive. It's incredibly dangerous. <laughs> there is <laughs> There's actually a minimum on the highway that you have to drive. You can be pulled over for going too slow. Just so you know. But, um, Chloe would for like, sure be in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Drug tested and everything. Like, ma'am, what is this? Why? Right. But um, I respected the fact that even though she hated driving on the highway, like she was so convinced and convicted with what she was trying to do that she was going to face it by herself no less to get to DC and make it happen Mm. but I also love that Eli was there and also that he took over the driving because I can't imagine what this book would have been if they were on like an eight hour car ride and they weren't going over 45 miles an hour I'm like girl you had to drive for like three days straight to make it to your audition going at that pace seriously so I'm just glad she was like you know what yeah you can drive. Go ahead. And that leads to the next question. How did you feel about Eli wrecking her car? Oh, I was like, okay, this is the thing. Like something has to yeah. happen. They've got to get thrown off course and learn and like learn how to deal with, she has to learn how to deal with getting thrown off course. So I was like, oh, I'm glad that nobody was hurt. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of, I didn't laugh, but I was like, oh God, of course, like I, I, I have, I totally understand like how this happens. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, and the reason why they crashed was also funny. Yeah. So like, I, I loved, I loved it, but I also like didn't love it. So like the child part of me was like, ah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, right. I knew that's going to happen. Right. But then like the adult part of me was just like, really though? Oh, I'm are they going like, to really? pay for this? This is way more serious yes. than you guys are making it out to me. Yes. This coming from the person who, again, as a teenager, I have a hundred percent run into things. That's like my parents knew what they were doing because I had a truck, like I had an SUV, and when I ran into things, my car was fine. My car was not the issue; it was the <laughs> other. That was what I ran into. <laughs> oh my god! And take away her license. Fun. Fun story, like my best friend came over, like we we turned 16 around the same time. So she had her car, I had my car, she was staying the night at my house, so she parked behind me. I live in the country, okay? My parents live in the country. So when you back out, like nobody parked behind me. You know, my parents oh, parked behind no. each other, nobody ever parked behind oh, me. No. And so I get in and I felt so bad because she got in the car. You can see where this is going, right? Oh. She got in the car, she's like, hey, remember I parked behind you? And I was like, yeah. First thing I did, threw my car in a reverse and just Blam. ran into her car. Yeah. Yep. And mind you, I drive a Ford. Her dad got her a Mercedes for her birthday. Ooh. And oh. she just, and the look on her face, she just dropped her head into her hands. She's like, oh my God, Chelsea, I just told you that I parked behind you. So my car was fine. I still have my car, by the way. It's great. Oh <laughs> but her car, it wasn't totaled, but you know, my parents had to get that fixed. And I say all that to say that when you run into things, especially other people, it's not like, oh, you cute. I'm going to let you go. With yeah. The oh, you mean homegirl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah. She like winked at her and she was like, oh, that's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's cool. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, <laughs> no. But um, 
And the conclusion to my story is it, her car got fixed and guess what? Her AC got fixed too because of my parents' insurance. So I guess you you're welcome there if you're know. listening. <laughs> but um, <laughs> oh but no, um, I, I kind of loved it, honestly. The only thing I didn't love was, again, how quickly they got it fixed and yeah. with the credit card because the other part of my mind was like, okay, so what's going to happen when Eli's mom finds out bill. that he just spent yeah. <laughs> he just put the, the bill for her car to get fixed? I love that as we're reading this as adults, we're like, oh, who's going to pay for that? Oh, God, their insurance rates are going up. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Not clothes for overnight. Oh, God. They don't have any toiletries. No. <laughs> I felt, I have never felt, so right. I have never felt older than I was, I was like in that moment. And I was like, oh, she doesn't have any, like, she doesn't have any extra clothes. She doesn't have any toothpaste. She didn't plan for any emergencies. Oh, like, do they even have chargers? I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I went straight straight grandma the case I, I skipped over all the other stages of development went straight to granny I was 85 <laughs> I was like oh my goodness did the seatbelts like did, did were they wearing their seatbelts did the airbags deploy like oh no <laughs> so bad I'm sitting in this situation I am sitting on the porch with you in the rocker because I was <laughs> in the same boat we're both sharing uh, iced tea because <laughs> like, I was like because they were like they're gonna stay overnight i was just like they're like they got away with so much in this book like they keep did. in mind that we're laughing and we're kind of poking holes at it but it's all in good fun yeah. because like we're all and this book was not written to, for, for us oh god yeah it's written for I was, for people who don't who don't have all this life experience thank god <laughs> honestly like once you hit college i uh, yeah so you'll you'll find amusement in it like we did because it's like honestly honestly that it's a good book it's just as adults you look at it differently from totally. different views yeah and it's like it doesn't make it any less entertaining it doesn't make it any less well written it doesn't make it any less hitting the target or its target audience is that you have to understand that we are no longer the target audience and we got gobsmacked with that <laughs> every step of the way I sound like because my mom I remember, yeah. <laughs> I remember sitting there and I thought the same thing. I was like, how are they going to get a hotel? Like, I get that you look older, but like as someone who has actually had to check into a hotel, that 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 little slick stuff ain't going to happen. Mm-mm. And then like when they got to DC and they stayed at that nice hotel, I was like, oh, what? You got money? Just so you know, some hotels you have to be at least like 20, 23, 25. Yeah. It's like renting a car. Like you have to be a certain age to rent a room. Yes. And if they say that they don't accept credit cards, oh, that's not like a a suggestion. That's a policy. Like we don't accept credit cards. (laughs) You have to pay this outright. (laughs) 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 It's just some things you don't work around, you know? Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. And then the barking dog. Yeah. They would have called up to your room. Somebody would have came up there and checked your room. They were knocked and like, we heard a dog. Yeah, like what? No, they're not gonna just call and be like, "Hey, do you have a dog? Do you think you're? Do they honestly think that you're gonna tell them? Like, yeah, I brought one. When it breaks all the policies, they could kick me out in the middle of the night, and I have nowhere to stay. Right. And then she was like, <laughs> and then she was like, I was barking every time I won. And then she was like, <laughs> yeah, <they're> like checks <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, that totally makes sense because checks. you bark when you win a card game. <laughs> what? I've, I've seen weirder but yeah there were <laughs> maybe that hotel guy had to or maybe I, he had to or Brian yeah he's like oh okay yeah it's the eighth weirdest thing I've seen this week <laughs> <sighs> okay okay um let's just say that they had their chargers and I, I but I also like how like we're we're laughing at this but also Chloe was mad at Eli oh so angry Walmart yeah to go get some like essentials and she's like Essentials, like he's like buying stuff like Kit Kat. He got a, he got oh, a water hey, gun. <laughs> yeah, like, she's like, "What do you need a water gun for? Like, what? What? I don't under. Do you not understand the seriousness of the situation? Like, I lied to my mom. I'm we're in a state that we're not supposed to be in. You wrecked my car. I just threw up all over you and our clothes. We smell like puke. We're living. We're staying in a motel that is like completely run down." You have a dog who's probably gonna die at any second, and we're in here in Walmart trying to get the necessities, and you want to buy a water gun? What? That was probably the most teenagerly thing that happened, honestly. Probably. That was spot on. I th- I feel like 
Eli stayed true to his kid, who he was. Oh, definitely. Like, definitely. And he didn't care. He was just like, it is what it is. Like, we'll figure it out. And I feel like that's such a, a like, a teenage guy move. Like, it, it's fine. Like, chill. Like, just chill. We're good. Can I tell you a quick <laughs> teenage LaCase story? That I, I was pulling back to the story as I was reading that part in the Walmart. So when I was in high school, we got to do study abroad programs. I got to go to Yucatan, Mexico, like where um, uh-huh. Cancun is. We went to see historic sites, like we went to Chichen Itza um, and all kinds of cool places. Mm-hmm. Well, as we're traveling there, there's a hurricane coming in and our luggage gets lost. We got it back a couple days later. Or like, I think a day after we landed, we got our stuff back. But like we, we land and all we have is our carry-on. So for me, I'm 16, all I have is my book bag, right? And like, we're gonna go to Walmart, we're gonna stock up. Tell me why I was like, they're like, you need to get clothes that are comfortable. And I'm like, well, I can just like buy boxers. Tell me why I'm traipsing around ruins and sandals, Tweety Bird boxers. I bought a hat I didn't need. Um, someone reminded me to buy toothpaste. <laughs> we met these Canadian tourists and like they were really cool, but they were like, what are you, what are you wearing? <laughs> I was like, oh, we're like, are you like, okay? What you were, I bet you were looking like that person like, Mm-mm, don't talk to her. No, nope. right. that's dangerous. That person is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I, I have always looked 12, so I don't think anyone thought I was a threat. They, you know, uh, <laughs> but I was so, I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally understand this moment. Like, I had no idea what I was supposed to be buying. Like, I needed my mom. Even at 16, I was like, what? Like, I, I guess I'll just buy the boxers and <laughs> wear these as clothes. So why not? And a tank top. <laughs> So since we're doing anecdotal stuff, I 100% feel you because like, I didn't go like out of the country or anything like that, but I have 100% been in a scenario where I'm like in a store and it's like my first real adulting moment. And I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And so like, <laughs> I called my mom and I was just like, mom, I'm at the store. What do I get? She's like, did you really just call me? Like, Chelsea, what do you need? Like, you need to brush your teeth, get toothpaste, and a toothbrush. <laughs> That's like, right. Okay. Um, it's hot. Get deodorant then. Like, what? Yes. It's common sense. Like, please help me, mommy. <laughs> like, oh mom, I don't know what to do. I'm sorry. I, I'm i incompetent. I am a child. Treat me as such. Tell me what to do. Right. And it's crazy because, like, when you are, like, when you want your parents to tell you what to do, they don't. And then when you don't, they do. And you're just like, can we line this up a little bit, please? Yes. You know? But... We're getting so off topic. Back to the book that we actually read. <coughs> um, uh, so for you listeners of the podcast, we're going to take a quick break. I can't actually pause the recording, so okay. you can just go. Okay. My husband forgot <laughs> yeah. his keys at work, so he's locked out. I'm going to kill everybody. I'll be right back. say don't even to him <laughs> i'm gonna be divorced tomorrow i swear on god i'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a single woman i will be like case perry again <laughs> i'm so angry okay i'm back oh my god no it's just like i okay that number, I, like i'm gonna like i wrote the time step so i don't but it's just like when you said that i was just like i felt it in your soul like, don't even with me right now <laughs> He goes, I'm give sorry. me a minute. Goes, I will deal with this later. He goes, I'm sorry. And that's when I was like, don't. Just don't. And I'm like, we were having, we were on a good flow. I, I swear to God. <laughs> <sighs> I love you, man. I love you too. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry. He's in so much trouble. He's just like top to bottom in trouble today. <laughs> top right and, I'm like, bottom. and in my mind I was like she's already mad because somebody broke into the house <laughs> and then it's like ironic because you can't even get in he came in and you didn't <laughs> I almost spit out my water some of it came out of my nose <laughs> oh <laughs> somebody broke in your house they did quite technically broke in 
Oh, uh, two men. Two. Thank God they were they they were middle like they were like retirees, so I could have defended myself. I, in theory. Oh my God! I almost don't want you to cut that, but I I know you have to. That was. Oh my gosh! I'm so mad. I'm so angry. Oh. <laughs> Chelsea, when I tell you I'm not doing the dishes all week, when I tell you I'm not doing boo, I'm not doing a dish, I'm not folding a sock. Okay. Like, you see this behind me, right? This is the extent of my cleaning up, and it's only for my own personal benefit. I just like, fold this. You can't this. see the floor. You can't see the floor. You can't see the floor. I can see the other side. No, the world can't know. The world can't know. Oh my gosh. Okay. We will look back on these moments and laugh when we're millionaires. Okay. Right. And I'm just going to be like, okay, this, I'm already thinking like this podcast is going to be so full of laughter. I don't even know. I know. (laughs) I actually love it. I love it. (laughs) Okay. Okay. All right. So we are at 36 minutes. So we're going to. All right. So. Back to the topic at hand. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask you, because, you know, we are adults. And as we've been mentioning, both of us have kind of looked at it through adults' eyes. Like, how do you think, like, how did you feel about her mom's reaction to it? Because mm. for me, when I was reading it, I was just like, her mom's reaction was like, if you're listening to this mom, I love you. But I also felt like it was very much like something that my mother would say is like, no, like, absolutely not. You're just not going to do it in a discussion. Mm-hmm. Like, no, 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 no. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> Boom. Whole conversation. <laughs> right. That's right it. There. And that's it. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's it. And that's pretty much the stance that her mom took towards it because she didn't explain to the, to Chloe all of her reasoning for it. We didn't get that until the end of the book. She just told Chloe no, which is why, you know, she went on through this journey. Yeah. So, yeah. And adult of the case world, how do you think she handled it? As an adult, I thought the mom was justified. I mean, her daughter that she trusts, um, they've earned each other's respect and trust as a family you know, lied to her, put herself in danger, got like the car, they had a car accident. So danger. Mm -hmm. She lied. They didn't have anywhere to stay. She didn't have any money. What if Eli hadn't been there and she had an accident? Mm -hmm. Um, she again lied. (laughs) And you know, me as an adult, I'm like, that's like, obviously something's up, you know, there. So I, I I thought the mom was very justified in her reaction as an adult, as like tap at a teenage yeah. case I'm like oh come on like it's her dream but right and it's just like there are two sides of the story so like I'm with you because it's like young me it's just like my life decisions line up with the case's life this I mean not the cases look I've been talking to you too long I know my life decisions <laughs> line up with Chloe's life decision and so like I I felt that like you just have to do what's right for you yeah. and if your parents don't like it then you know you deal with that after you do what you have to do for yourself. Yeah. But you know from her mom's perspective like as an adult thinking rationally cuz let me tell you once you hit like 21 something in your brain just clicks it's a place and you're just like bruh I was a horrible teenager. <laughs> like what? What was we I thinking? We all were. We all were. We all were and all like of us. the stuff that you did and yeah. the way that you thought you were just like what was I thinking yeah and your mom will ask you you're like i don't know i like i don't know what to tell you i'm sorry it just happened that way it seems like a good idea at the time yeah yeah but um i say all that to say that i feel like when you like when you lie you can get back a lot of things like if you get hurt you can fix them you can reset your bones you can you know be you can recover from a lot of things yeah but trust is one of those things where once it's gone it's just gone and you can try to rebuild relationships with people but it's always going to be in the back of their mind like that was that one time that you did this and especially when it's a relationship like a parent and they've known you your literal entire life you're their baby it's just like (laughs) you know if it's something that they remember especially in cases like chloe's where she doesn't do it very often so it's like a very significant thing like yeah you lied to me yeah it's like what else have you lied about like have you been lying to me and you just i have been been caught yeah or is this like you know an anomaly like and if so why would you do it yeah you know totally and oh sorry go ahead no i I was gonna just say like on top of the lie 
you can't forget well in the in the story chloe's father died in a car accident um mm-hmm. when she was three so there's a lot of unresolved issues there for her mom i'm sure you know so it's everything's ramped up when you when you factor that that um factoid in yeah and also i understand why she said no mm-hmm. because even though like when you're a teenager you feel grown mm. It's one of those things where you're not like you might feel that way, but you're not. Mm-hmm. And Chloe's a junior in high school, mm-hmm. so it's like you want to go to this conservatory in New York. Well, guess what? That means you have to move to New York by yourself. Yeah. And you know, New York is not known to be the safest city in America. <laughs> you know, it's dangerous, and to be a young single black female moving there by yourself, it's like yeah, your mom is going to be terrified, especially if she's not in position to just like up and move with you because some people's yeah. parents they do that they uproot their entire lives so that their kids can follow their dreams but not everybody has that ability yeah you know yeah so it's just like that's another very real factor like danger is a very real thing and i like that eli pointed that out to her too he's like yeah your mom's not crazy like you want to you say that you want to do this like what if i really wanted to hurt you and i like that he pointed that out he's like if i really wanted to hurt you what, what are you going to do about it yeah and just, she's like, well, you wouldn't hurt me. He's like, I wouldn't, but what if I did? Yeah. He's like, I'm taller than you. I'm stronger than you. Yep. And you, like, if, if you weren't suspecting it, then then what are you going to do? It's going to be too late then. Yeah. So I like that, they, that that was actually brought up in the book. And that was like a reality that she had to face, you know? Yeah, I agree. That was a nice touch. It was. Because I feel like, especially as teenagers you know, you can overlook the consequences of a lot of your actions and not really realize. Because again, going back to like what I said at the beginning, like even if you didn't tell your mom and you got away with going all the way to North Carolina to do this audition and you came back before she came back, what if you got in, bruh? Yeah. Then what you gonna do? And your mom's just gonna be happy? I don't think so. (laughs) Oh, yay! I'm so glad that you lied to me and went to this thing months ago and got into the school. I told you that you weren't going to and couldn't apply for it. Oh, my God. But now that you're in, you can 100% just hop on a plane and go to New York, or not a plane because they're in Jersey. You You can just jump in your car and drive to New York and go live your life. Nope. Good luck. Nope. No, 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 honey, boo boo. Sorry, close. <laughs> that wasn't gonna work. <laughs> oh gosh, oh to be young. <laughs> I kept thinking that as I was reading it, like, oh to be young again. <laughs> right, young and naive and just yes. so hopeful. Hopeful. And That's I, what I loved about it. Right, and I was, I was talking. I'm gonna say to be on the group. And if you're listening to this, I interviewed her for the Written Melanin channel, so like you can 100% check that out. But I was talking to her, and I asked her, you know, what she loved about YA genre in general. And she was just like, because when you're when you're a teenager, the world is so big. Yes. You know? And I just feel like that really sums up what is so great about this book, of what is so great about Chloe and Eli and everything that they're doing. Because, you know, Chloe has her own adventure, but <clears throat> Eli is the opposite. Yeah. Like Chloe's trying to get to her destination. Eli is dreading his destination because he's like, once he gets to North Carolina, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Once he gets to North Carolina, his he is going to have to face his dad who wants him to go to Chapel Hill and be a lawyer when he wants to go this, to California, to the San Francisco Art Institute yep. to be an artist. And obviously, you know, dad is not for that. Mm-hmm. Mom is not for that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> because they're like wasted potential yeah you know you can't support yourself as an artist you can't support yourself as a creative like what are you gonna do when you need to eat i'm not going to support you forever you need to think this through this is a decision for the rest of your life this isn't something you just undo and of course eli is like no this is what i want to do i'm confident in it which when you're 17 for sure do that yeah <clears throat> yeah oh, excuse me i've been laughing so much that now i can't talk oh, properly. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um Obviously, as a creative, I disagree with that kind of mindset. Like, you can 100% do what you want to do. And you can be successful at it. And I think if you're passionate about it and you're really going to pursue it, 100%, go for it. Pursue it. Chase that dream. And don't wait until you're much older and jaded with life to be like, oh, man, if I I had known when I was a teenager, I should have done that. So, like, I support Eli, but again, it's like, 
I'm in this weird place in my life where it's like, ooh, I still understand what it felt like to be that teenager. Yeah. But as an adult, I'm like, ooh, I get where your parents are coming from. Because yes. like, I don't want to support you for the rest of your life. I 100% want you to get up out of my pocket. So go live your life and do something that you can support yourself. Because yeah. I feel like that's probably every parent's biggest dream or biggest fear, <clears throat> rather, is that not necessarily that they have to support their children for the rest of their life, but that their children don't become the functioning members of society that they probably want them to be. Mm -hmm. Or meet their full potential. Independent of them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I actually had a question about that. Okay, so Eli's parents, Mm -hmm. I mean, I I don't think the dad was very aware, but the mom knew um, about his abilities, but they were so adamant that he get a quote-unquote practical job take a traditional pathway to success whereas his sister his older sister larissa was a ballerina with chloe and Mm -hmm. you know the mom and dad were all about her dancing all about taking that creative pathway but you know larissa wanted to go do something she wanted to go to college she wanted to study and i mean she cut she had all this like big beautiful hair she cut her hair stopped wearing a ton of makeup like she was a doll so i was just interested in seeing what your thoughts were about you know why was it okay for Larissa to go into the arts, but it wasn't okay for Eli? Honestly, I <clears throat> I thought about that while I was reading, but more so, I thought about Larissa compared to Chloe. Oh, yeah. And my, my idea was like, man, I know at some point Chloe probably thought, like, I wish that Larissa and I could probably just switch families because her mom wanted her to keep dancing. And Chloe's mom was like, you're not going to dance. This is just for fun. Yes. And just like dance in college. And Larissa was like, I want to go to college. But her mom was like, I want you to dance. Mm-hmm. So I just found that like, that had to be frustrating for Chloe. But as far as your question, it's like, I didn't even really consider it that way. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even look at it mm-hmm. from that perspective of like, they supported Cl- uh, Larissa yeah. wanting to, like being a dancer, but she didn't want to versus supporting Eli when he does want to. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think it's one of those things where, I think it's two things. The first one, the lighthearted one is just like, I think parents like to low key be contradictory with their children. <laughs> like they, yeah. they like to push them to do things that they don't want to do because sure. I feel like in a lot of ways, as a parent, your job is to push your children to do things that they don't want to do because that helps them to grow and that helps them to become better people because most of the things that you learn as an adult to become a functioning human being are not things that as a child you wanted to do. Sure. Like you didn't want to sit in a desk all day and go to school to learn things, but you yeah. did. You didn't want to sit down and learn to write. You wanted to go outside and play. You didn't want to learn how to cook. You just wanted to eat. Yes. You know, all of those things you you learn because you don't want to, even though you don't want to do them. And I feel like after doing that for 17, 18 years, yeah. your parents are just naturally pushed towards getting you to do the thing that you don't want to do but I also think it's a thing of a his parents didn't really know like I think his mom didn't know the extent to which Mm -hmm. he drew I think she knew that he liked it and it was a talent of his but he was also in her mind he was out in the streets and you know he was he was running the streets he was coming home drunk he was you know hanging with some sketch people he was doing some sketch activities he came home with like a literal bald spot in his head after going to a party oh my god you know she probably was at a point where she was just fed up with him like i don't know what else to do with you but i feel like also it's a thing of just I, in isolation with like just isolating that one problem I feel like it's a thing of with girls you're you're it's okay for you to chase a less realist well parent what parents see, I'm not gonna say it's less realistic but what parents see as less financially feasible sure because it's like you know it's an old-fashioned mindset of you can you can marry somebody you can marry exactly somebody. that's where and I was coming from mm-hmm with Eli, it's like, you're a man. You're not really going to have the opportunity to just find somebody who's going to take care of you. Yes. I mean, you can. Sugar mamas exist. But, like, you're a man. <laughs> not sugar mamas. You're, and you're a black man. <laughs> that. So, you need something that you can support yourself with. And you have to have something solid. Because, you know, we live in America. And they're going to look at you a certain way. And they're going to look at you like you're a degenerate. Whether you are or not. Definitely. So, you need to prove, to, prove that you are not. You need to live a life 
that shows that you are more than what they think that you are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I feel like that that weight just presses heavier on black men than it does on black women. Definitely. Girls. But even so, I feel like Larissa was the most pragmatic character. Like, I felt like Eli was stable, but I felt like Larissa was the most pragmatic one. Like, yeah, I like dancing, but I'm not in love with it. And so I'm not going to keep chasing it. I'm going to go to college and I'm going to find what I want to do. Yep. And I absolutely loved her transformation because, you know, you see her mom and you see the way that Chloe sees her mom. Like she's got on heels and she clacks down the street and she's got on this fly dress. And Chloe knew something was wrong when she went in the house and she was like in a bathrobe and curlers. Mm -hmm. And Larissa is the exact opposite of that. She's like, I don't need the hair. I don't need the makeup. I just need myself intact. Yes. Which my question for you then becomes like, how much of her of herself do you think Larissa had to give up in order to survive the type of house that she was oh, in? Oh gosh. It seems like she didn't really get to be her own person at all as a young woman. I mean, Eli drew a picture like so a big a big um, turning point in the story is when Eli allows Chloe to look at his sketches and there's a sketch of Larissa and it's like um, one half of her face is wearing red lipstick and has eye makeup and big old perfectly done hair. The other side of her face is bare. Her She's like got a short haircut and she just looks serious and I feel like that is the real Larissa. So it's like she was going through life wearing this mask trying to live up to what her mom wanted from her and I think um, it kind of made me sad uh, because I've, I've known people who have had to live like that in their households and you really do have to you learn to bury yourself just so that you can get through it and I, and I, I mean I don't think there's any there's no abuse going on um, and well at least I mean we don't see that in the story anything like that but it is you know just kind of like the burying of self and it was so nice to, I was so glad Christina Forrest included a girl like that I, I mean she wasn't like she didn't become like super masculine or anything like that she she was still very much a girl she just uh, was being the kind of girl she wanted to be you know and I think it's so important like and she didn't like look down on Chloe for her to be a dancer still Chloe didn't look down on her for not long, no longer being a dancer it's just like you're seeing these two different types of people you know and maybe in so I think in some ways dance like was a way for Larissa to free herself and learn what she wanted from life it, it, sometimes you learn what you want in life by learning what you don't want in life you know like mm-hmm. being the center of attention being this made up doll being you know a someone who belongs to a man, someone that your parents can look at and be like, isn't she lovely instead of being like, you know, oh, here are all the traits that make her Larissa. It's just, oh, she's pretty and she dances, you know? So um, I thought that was so well done. Um, and, but I, but I also love that she still had a relationship with Eli, you know? They had to, she just had to get away to be her own person. And she was still happy and adjusted. She was popular at the college, you know, and it showed that she didn't have to have the makeup and the, you know, be on like on point all the time for people to care about her. So I think it was really cool to see that. On point. Yeah. On point. Hey, on point. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to reference. <laughs> I loved it. I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> but yeah, I thought I was, I was so happy to see that character. There's, there's many ways I, to be a person. And I liked that we got to see another way. Absolutely. And for me, I if I had to pick a favorite character out of the book, it would probably 100% be Larissa. Yeah. Because I just, like for me personally and how I transitioned from teenager to adult, it looked so much like what Larissa was doing. Oh, okay. Because it was like, once I left my parents' household, and keep in mind that I went to school locally. So like, my parents were literally five minutes away mm. at any given time because, like, their jobs were literally on the same street as the university. Oh, nice. I attended. I mean, not nice, and, depending. <laughs> I mean, it was because, like, when I had to do laundry, it there was great because I could just go home and do it. For and, sure. like, food. Yep. You know? But um, it was just one of those things where it's just, like, having that space and that freedom to be the person that you want to be without someone... I'm not even going to say telling you because my parents by no means were like, oh, you have to do this and you have to be that. It's just like, again, when you're a child, your parents guide you a lot. Yes. And you don't realize how far that guiding hand reaches until you're no longer up under it yeah. necessarily. 
And so I like that she was finding herself and I like the parallel that it drew to Chloe and her coming to decisions about making decisions for herself or her future. Yeah. And she knew that she could dance, even though her mom didn't want that. And I like that Larissa made the decision for herself that she wanted an education, even though her mom didn't necessarily want her. I'm going to say she didn't want her to be educated, but she wanted her to dance. Yeah. You know, definitely. So And I like that she came to herself and she's like, I, and she doesn't wear the makeup because I feel like that is another really big factor that a lot of girls have to like make a decision on. It's just like, am I going to be that girl who wears makeup all the time? Or am I going to be the girl who goes natural? Yeah. You know? And I feel like Larissa went to that route of, I'm going to be the girl who goes natural. Like I'm not going to worry about all this, these superficial things because I've spent a lot of time with these superficial things already. Yeah. And so... I just like that, and I like that her boyfriend is so very much in love with her. I know, it was so sweet. That was so cute. And it was so cute. And I, like, I know that some people really, really, really are going to just love Chloe and Eli. I freaking loved Larissa and Will. Me too. I thought it was so cute, and I thought it was so sincere about how college kids who are in serious relationships, no, if you're listening to this and you're in college, know that I said college kids in serious relationships. I, I thought that's how they how they act, like how she just like shows up and she's like, hey, my brother is here. Can he stay with you? And he's just like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Can stay. yeah. Like, what? Fine. Can you cut his hair for him? Sure. Yeah. Like, I got you. I'll, <laughs> I'll do anything for you. Right. You know? I love and they're that. Like, how they're all together and corny and they don't even care. Yeah. It's like, it's just great. It was really sweet. It's, it's great. Nice, healthy relationship. I was like, oh no, please don't let Will be bad. Oh, please. Oh, okay, good. He's a sweetheart. Oh, he's a nerd. Oh, good. <laughs> like, this is yeah, great. Yeah, he's just this really cute nerdy guy who yeah. just minds his business yeah. and just goes along with what his girlfriend's doing. Like, oh, family's here? We're having ramen cool. for dinner. Brother, yeah. stay with me? Cool. Sounds great. We're dancing? Cool. <laughs> yeah. Love you want to eat? All I got is noodles. Cool. Warm it up. Let's go. Right? It was It was good. <laughs> it was good. It was really, really good. <laughs> so that, speaking of relationships, that kind of leads me into one of my last questions, I guess. Um, I have maybe a couple of more, but this is getting kind of long. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is like part of the course with us, I think. <laughs> it really is. For those of you listening, like we honest to God, probably, I don't think we've had a conversation that has been less than three hours. Oh my gosh. It sounds insane <laughs> when you say it out loud, but when it's it happening, we don't realize. Right. So, life. Okay. <laughs> How did you feel about Eli and Chloe getting together at the end of the book? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. My question is, like, like obviously we love that they got together, but, like, do you think that they are the type to make that long distance work between <sighs> literally New York and California? They cannot get further from each other and stay in the continental U.S. Right. I don't know. Um... It's a book, so yeah. <laughs> in real life, no. <laughs> in a book, like I have book, hope. Yeah. yeah. And my hope, my hopeful, the part of my heart that is hasn't been deadened by adulthood says that they could make it work in the book world, but in real life, no. But it was, I, it was sweet. I was thought they came together. I was going to be. I actually, I would have been upset if they hadn't gotten together. But you know, that's how, that's how it, it works as a reader. It's like, oh, they're supposed to be together, so they're together. You know, how, how did you feel right. about it? I expected it. Yeah. Kind of like how you feel. Like, I expected it. And in book world, okay, yeah, like, 100%, they're going to be together. Yeah. But, like, real life, like, absolutely not. No. Their whole dynamic literally hinges on proximity to each other. I think even if she went to a dance school in California, in San Francisco, if, even if she went to the San Francisco Art Institute and they lived in a co-ed dorm on the same, in the same building, a floor above each other. I don't think it would work. I know. And the only reason I say that is because their mindsets are too far gone and too far, like too different. They are very different. Yeah. I think for them to last yeah. a long period. Of time. Like they're really cute together because they have that like long term friendship antagonistic type relationship. Yeah. Yeah. But. I feel like in college, Eli would become more of, not jaded, but he'd come more into like who he is and an understanding. 
and because he's a year older, he'd be in college for longer. Yes. And I feel like one of two things would either happen. Either he'd become really serious about Chloe and like have these really high expectations of her that she would feel like were too demanding. Oh, or yeah. Or he would become like this really, really jaded guy where he's just like, I'm into my art. I'm focusing on myself and you need to figure out who you are. Like, I know who I am, but you need to figure out who you are yeah. before we can figure out how to work this out. Like, I don't feel like on an Eli's perspective, on Eli's side, it would ever be a thing if he stops loving Chloe. I think it would be a more of, uh, I think it's going to be a thing if he matures. Yeah. And I can't see him maturing in such a way where they would mature together. Definitely. Because you know I, I can see him. Chloe getting that freedom from her mom mm-hmm. and losing it because like that's a very real thing like y'all think it's just preacher's kids and it's not like kids who are sheltered oh. like really really sheltered and i'm not talking about like safety i'm talking about with their decisions like they don't yep. have that chance yep. to be free and to make bad decisions to make mistakes to make mistakes and to just like grow yeah. like when they get that freedom they utilize it and it's not necessarily malicious it's just like oh snap I can now yeah you yeah. know and I feel like that would change and you get experiences that way and experience changes you yeah. life is made up of experiences and with Eli he had his experiences in high school so he already knows who he is so when he matures he's going to mature and settle down Chloe hasn't had those experiences. So when she gets that experience, she's probably going to get that experience and get a little crazy for a while. Mm. And it's going to be probably be difficult to maintain that with Eli in tow, especially being a ballerina and probably having a strict schedule anyway. Yeah. Long distance wise, it's probably going to kill it. Yeah. So that's my perspective. You actually raised a really good point. Um, I was I was actually thinking um, about how Chloe has always known you know she's a, a 17 year old so how much do you know but she's always known who chloe is and eli like larissa has had to hide who he is so i i almost wonder if like he's just gonna go buck wild <laughs> in san francisco because he finally gets to be he finally gets to be who he is you know so um yeah i, I real world those two i think would have a lot of illumination coming their way yeah the other thing is I feel like Chloe is gonna want to experience relationships with other guys. No, oh, yeah. Because the only two guys that she ex- that she talks about are Trey and who is like like he's literally gay. Yeah. Like her first kiss was her gay best friend. Yeah. She didn't know, and but yeah. <laughs> she didn't know, but you know that's how it worked out. Yeah. And then and then Eli and those were like literally her childhood friends. Yeah. So I feel like she would need to, not need to that's not the right word i feel like she's gonna want to like when especially when she gets that distance from both eli and her mom and just everything that she's known and everything is different i feel like she's like she's not she's gonna be curious and that curiosity is going to be stronger than what she feels for eli yeah because it's going to be Pro- like proximity is real you guys it There's is the reason why a lot of distance relationships are hard very and difficult. that proximity is a very very real thing knowing that even if it's not you know like with me but like knowing I can get to you in an hour if I want to yeah. like I really want to see you I can get in my car versus having to plan a like buy a plane ticket and for like a weekend, plan a weekend yeah like a week in advance yeah you know it's tough it's very it's very tough yeah. especially for kids so, but yeah, I, I mean, I love the hopefulness of it. You know, I, I, um, I love reading stories like this where people are discovering love for the first time. Like, and, and not, not like a, not even like in a sexual way, just like the, in, like the intimacy that comes with like opening up to other people. It's really, it's really yeah. sweet. It, I don't know. My heart is still warm and fuzzy. So <laughs> it, 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 let me tell you, because like. I absolutely live, like, I live and breathe those moments where yeah. it's just like, oh, so close, but oh, so somebody walked in, or <laughs> not, not quite, like, the moment after yeah. uh, her audition, and she's, like, running up to him, and she's, like, they're, they're hugging because they're excited, and she's, like, about to kiss him, and then his phone goes off, and I'm like, oh, oh. I live for those moments. The near miss. The, the cute and the fuzzy, and the... Yeah. The, the, the only thing I will say this and I'm not going to say it's a negative but it's the only thing that I straight up just did not like about the book 
I did not like, like, I live for the fuzzy scenes. I really, really, truly do. Uh-huh. But that moment when they were in the dance studio at Larissa's college. Oh, uh-huh. And they were, like, close to touching and all this and other. Like, I, I get the fuzziness, but, like, also in my mind, I'm like, okay, they're 17, 18, about to go to college. Yeah. And they're, like, freaking out over brushing arms and they've known each other their entire life. Like, I just... But it was the brush that, of love, Chelsea. Young like brush it. of love. Okay. Because <laughs> I wanted, I wanted some aggressiveness. I'm oh my gosh. <laughs> Just a little bit. Oh yeah. No, I'm not trying to knock what you didn't like. So, um, I just that was that yeah. was for me. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't. I'm trying to think. I didn't think the dad was very well developed. He was just. Uh, shitty. Oh, sorry. Pardon my language. He was just uh, not great. <laughs> Whoop. Whoop. Sorry. <laughs> that was the caffeine ah! talking. Pardon me. <laughs> he, he was just kind of like your. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. But uh, my mom, that was vivid. Um, he was kind of like your run of the mill bad dad, you know. So yeah. that was the only like the only character that felt underdeveloped. Uh, the only thing that I probably no. had a problem with. Um, I'm gonna challenge you on that one. Okay. Because. I didn't necessarily think he was a bad dad. I think he was a little bit underdeveloped. Sure. But I don't I don't think he was a bad dad. I think he was that parent who knows their kid too well. Mm. And so they clash a lot. Because like have you ever seen those those like I stopped talking. Sorry, my brain stopped. But like have you ever seen those like parent and child you know duos where the child is so much like their parent and their parent knows like they know what they're thinking and so they're just like Mm-mm, nope not gonna happen gotta nip this in the bud the only yeah. reason i say this because my brother and my mom are that way and that's me and my dad a lot <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like my mom understood so many things about my brother that it was just like ain't gonna get past me i know like i know i birthed you i know and so yeah that is true i feel like eli's dad is probably that person just like knows through and through yeah i could see that just through and through i know my son and i see where this is going and it's just like i gotta i gotta say like no because at the end of the day he did like come around to it Mm. but it was also one of those things where he's just like I really just want to prevent you from doing the wrong thing with your life. Yeah. And to be fair, to be fair to, to Eli's parents, he did kind of come at it out of nowhere yeah. because like Chloe, he just did it on the sneak tip. Yeah. just threw it at them like, nah. Like they're supposed to be nah, okay with it. Go to San Francisco. Yeah. Like, whoa, pause. This wasn't the plan. That's not you didn't even apply to me? Is this the Art Institute of San Francisco? Oh my what gosh. What do you mean you're going there? You're just going? Can you imagine? My parents would have been hot. Ooh, I would have been in so much trouble. Oh. My. So hot. They would have been can't. so livid. My parents would have been like, no, you're not. It just been like, no. Because the thing, and that's the thing that I liked, but this detail I didn't like. Even as 18, just so you know, when you're 17 and you're going to college, your parents have to sign off on that yep. because you're not a legal adult yet. Nope. So like if you are if you graduate when you're 17 and your parents say you're not going to a college and they don't sign off on it, guess where you're not going? That's, that's real. Sorry. Just so you know. Oh God, college. I remember putting an application. Sorry, I'm going down. I, this book has put me down memory lane so many times. Like I just remember that the excitement and the terror and then like getting the acceptance letter and all of those moments, you know, that... It, never experience again but that were like they feel like that it was like the first day of the uh, first day of the rest of your life when you figure all that stuff out it really does and i i feel like that is what's so fun about being a teenager yeah and looking back on it it's just that feeling of like you're literally out on the diving board of life yeah and you're just sitting there and you're looking at it and you're just like wow the world is so big and yeah. you're just like preparing yourself to jump into it and you're so excited and it's terrifying, but you're thrilled. And then you're just like, yo, this is going to be great. Yeah. I'm going to make a giant splash. And you're just trying to figure out what you're doing. And it's it's great. Like, yeah. I love applying to college. 
because like <laughs> toot my own horn a little bit i was smart y'all i was valedictorian so i had people sending me money like go ahead right, girl like, come here, come here. go ahead and it's just like it was, it's fun and it's great when people are looking at you like oh you're gonna do great you're gonna do fantastic things you're gonna change the world we're so proud of you you made it this far you're gonna go so far you're gonna be amazing mm -hmm. it's great but then like <laughs> whoo expectations Oh. Potential and expectations. That's a whole podcast life. right there, talking about like the expectations that are put on you. I was that way too. Like everyone's like, "Oh, like Hey, is so great. This is you know, you're not gonna have any problems. We expect to see you on TV." Boo, boo, boo. And it's like when you get into that college room, writers. huh? Yeah, we're both, and now we're both writers. We're both writers. We're both writers. Same here in pajamas. But um, I just remember that <laughs> first like class where I wasn't the smartest person in the room. You know that feeling like when you're not, you're like no longer the best. It's like, well, what is my identity now? I, this is totally off topic, but I just was thinking about that. Like, <laughs> oh my god, my identity for so long has been this thing. But I think it kind of ties back into the book because it's like, um, you know, so much of who you are as a teenager is going to change, and sometimes it doesn't change at all. Sometimes you come back to who you were all along, but it's that journey. It is. And I was like, understand that if you're listening to this and you are a young person, I don't know what our podcast age demographic is. I don't need <laughs> that information. But if you are a young person, understand that who you are in high school is not necessarily who you'll be in college. It's not necessarily who you'll be as an adult. And it's not necessarily guaranteed to change either. Yeah. You know, you, really, I feel like college is just that point when you become self-aware and then you go into adulthood, you know, understanding who you were in high school and who you were in college. And then you make the best of both worlds yeah. and you start to become actually grounded in who you are and who you will become. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's just, it's the world is big and the world is open. And this book, honestly, you guys, it, it's, it's great because it, it's, it, it, it makes you it opens your mind and it makes you think about you know if you are like us and you're older like yeah it's it's fun to sit and laugh about you know some of the things that we notice as adults but you know when you read it it's, you really kind of reflect on what it was to be a teenager and yeah. what that meant to like grow into yourself and make decisions for yourself and start to build the life that you want to see because I can't remember what I was watching but like choosing at that time in your life you know you're not making decisions that are you're switching from making decisions that are like you know four four month decisions to like 40 year decisions yes you know like the things that you start doing at that point start affecting you for the rest of your life yeah and like when you have that kind of weight on you but also the kind of freedom that comes with being a kid and not having really experienced the consequences of that it's like this euphoric feeling of literally having the world in the palm of your hand at the edge of your fingertips yep. and it's amazing and I feel like this book captures that essence so honestly and so purely mm -hmm. and so genuinely and it's it's amazing it honestly is and I loved the characters I loved Chloe I loved Eli I especially loved Larissa I feel like she was probably my favorite character yeah like I said that earlier and I even loved how her, her mom and how she reacted because I feel like that's also very honest and very true to life and very real. And something that as the reader, whether you're young or older, you can understand. And again, it just paints a larger picture of what to expect from, from life, uh -huh. you know? Like the, the tables will turn. You won't be young forever. You won't be a teenager forever, you know? One day you're gonna be that mom who's just like my daughter snuck off while I was, while I was on a cruise, yep. <laughs> got into a car accident, threw up on her boyfriend, and then stayed in the hotel for three nights with a doll she wasn't supposed to have to come back and be like, oh yeah, I didn't mean to lie to you. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh my poor mother. <laughs> I just keep thinking about right. it. My poor mother. So ma, if you're listening to this, know that I love you and I'm sorry for everything that I did. Honestly. Honest. Everything that you know about it, anyway. Gotta, <laughs> Gotta keep it a little spicy. Don't need to know everything. Yeah. <laughs> Don't need to know it all. But, um, um, I believe that is it. Do you have anything else to add? No, you summed it up perfectly. I, I think this is a great read. I recommend it. Um, Christina Forrest is a great talent. I'm so excited to have had the chance to read the book. I'm glad that we, we chose this for the book club. It was nice. Nice change of pace. 
Yes. So, and keeping that in mind, if you are a Christina Forrest fan or you would like to be, she will be on the podcast later. I can't give you an exact time and or date just yet, but she will be on the podcast. Woo woo. And <laughs> opportunity to interview her if nothing changes. So like keep an eye out for that. But that being said, that is it for this video. I will leave links to everything, just like everything, everything in the description box of wherever you are listening to this at, along with where you can follow us me, CM Lockhart, and LaCase. Are you going by your full name? LaCase Marie Cousineau? Nope, just from, from LaCase Marie on Instagram, from. Twitter, YouTube. From LaCase Marie. <laughs> you heard her. So, if you enjoyed this, please, please, please share it with a friend. Then go to YouTube, follow the Written and Melanin channel, and then go over there and follow LaCase from LaCase Marie on her channel. And then you'll be good. You'll be done with the podcast. Those are all the instructions that I can give you. So thank you guys for watching. And until next time, I hope your days are lovely and your books are interesting. Bye.